Hello everybody, in this short lesson, we will discuss the, the concept of signals and systems. We have three simple objectives. In other words, by the end of this lecture, you will be able to define what a system and what a signal is. We will discuss the conceptual meaning of the concept of systems and signals. Now the second objective of this lesson is that we will broadly categorize systems and signals. And lastly, we will give the mathematical descriptions of the type of the different types of signals that are important in medical physics. Keep that in mind. It is worthwhile for you to understand that the fundamental concepts of signals and systems is very important in the modeling of medical imaging systems. Therefore, it is essential for you to understand these concepts if you really are to understand how medical imaging system works. But the question is, what is a system? In simple terms, a system is anything or, or simply an abstraction that takes in an input signal, operates on the input signal and gives out an output signal called the response. Therefore, we can conclude that a system establishes a relationship between an input signal and uh, the output signal. But the question remains, what really is a signal? So we have a system It takes in an input signal, which is a function of one or two variables and gives out an output signal, which may be a function of one or two variables. So in other words, a system establishes a relationship between an input signal and an output signal. Now, bear in mind that the input signal is related to the output signal by a simple expression. Now, we will discuss the merits of this expression at a later lesson but the question remains what is a signal a signal usually is represented by a function of of one or two independent variables which contains information about the behavior or the nature of a particular physical phenomenon let me say that again a, a signal is simply an abstraction of a physical quantity represented by a function of one or two independent variables. Represented by a function of one or two independent variables. So we, we are safe to say that a signal is a function of one or two independent variables that contains information about the behavior of a, the behavior of a particular physical phenomena. A good example of a signal that you can relate with is your voice. Another typical example of a signal is the electrical current flowing through the flowing through a resistor or the voltage across a capacitor in an RC circuit. In relation to medical physics, 
you have to understand that understanding the concepts of signals and system is really fundamental to describing or modeling medical imaging systems. So this leaves us with the question, how can we classify uh, different signals? Now with respect to this lecture, we will broadly classify signals into three categories. But keep in mind that if you study other books, listen to other authors, they might classify signals differently. But in this lecture, we will broadly classify signals into three broad categories. A signal can be a continuous signal, a discrete signal, or a mixed signal. If you read other books, they can classify signals as even signals or odd signals, energy signals or power signals, deterministic signals or non-deterministic signals, and so on and so forth. But with respect to medical imaging physics, we will classify signals in three broad categories. Continuous signals, discrete signals, or mix signals. So the question is, what is a continuous signal? Now, in general, a signal is represented by a function of one or two independent variables that contains information about the behavior or nature of a particular physical phenomenon. Now, a continuous signal is represented by a continuous function whose independent variable is continuous. Let me explain further. A continuous signal is present for all instant in time or space. A typical example of a continuous signal is the voltage across the capacitor or the current through a resistor in an RC circuit. Now, if we draw the voltage across the capacitor, it is a sinusoid. You realize that the values of the independent variable T is continuous. Therefore, this is a continuous signal. Another example of a continuous signal really is a function that represents the distribution of the attenuation of X-rays through a particular cross-section of, of the human body in a CT scan. You realize that the values of X, the spatial distribution, the values of X and Y is continuous in time and in space. So that represents an example of a continuous signal. So the, to, to summarize these concepts, a continuous signal is continuous because its independent variable or variables is also continuous. It is present at all points in time and in space. At all points in time and in space. Now a discrete, a discrete signal is only present at discrete points in time and in space. Understand that a discrete signal is represented by a function of x and y. But this independent variable x and y can only take discrete values. That makes the function a discrete function which defines a discrete signal which defines a discrete signal. Now what you need to bear in mind is that the values that x can take can be represented by a sequence. That sequence is usually represented in, bra in brackets xn, yn. 
And therefore, a, a very common way for you to know that the signal is discrete is if the values of the independent variables are represented by a sequence. If they are represented by a sequence, it means that the values of the independent variables can only uh, are discrete at a, at a point in time or in space. The third category is the mixed signal. Usually, a mixed signal is represented by a function whose independent variable are both continuous and mixed. In other words, if a mixed signal is represented by this function, x can be continuous and y can be discrete. And so the function has a mixture of continuous variables and mixed and discrete variables that defines a mixed signal. 